A fourth down and five situation, and they will have to punt first time of the game for Carson Newman to punt. Jim Bales is the punter, and he's standing back at his own 35-yard line. Charles Washington is deep to receive the punt along with Ronald Walters. Good snap, rushes on, and he gets a high kick off, and Washington fields it at the 16-yard uh, line, calling for the fair catch, and that's where Cameron will take over. First down and 10 for their second possession of the first quarter, 6.50 to go in the first quarter of a scoreless ball game. So Carson Newman, after experiencing initial success on their very first uh, on their very first possession, now uh, showing no success whatsoever and having to punt the football away and giving Cameron the ball first in and 10, but in not very good field position from the 17-yard line. Roosevelt Campbell at quarterback, and he'll have his tight end coming in motion and resetting on the side nearest your camera. Option play for Gamble, and he cuts up field after just a couple of yards gain. Not much there at all. Stop there defensively for the Carson Newman Eagles. Trey Eller there on the stop along with uh, Fred Wagner along that left side of the line. Nose guard Fred Wagner in on the stop after just about a two-yard gain. It brings up a second down and eight play from the 19-yard line. Just under six and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Side, make inside, and Gamble on the option goes around the end and is stopped after only about a two yard gain uh, there defensively on the stop for the uh, Carson Newman Eagles. Alan Brown getting up off the pile, as, as well as John Thielig making the stop at linebacker. Down and six play for Cameron from the 20 yard line. No read. Looking to throw. And now flushed out of the pocket, going to the sideline and forced out of bounds. Trey Eller there forcing Gamble out of bounds after a scrambling gain along that sideline. Looks like he has made enough for the first down, though, at the 30 yard line. Cameron's first first down of the day, and it comes with five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Cameron from their own 30 yard line. Five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Scoreless game. We have a, uh, a timeout on the field, it appears. So, so we'll take a timeout as well. There is five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Carson Newman and Cameron scoreless. Back with more after this. It was a three yard gain for Cameron, so it'll bring up a second down and seven for the Aggies. Uh, from their 39-yard line. Five minutes to go in the first quarter. Cameron with the football in black moving from right to left. Second down and seven for Cameron. Give inside and he has stacked up after a gain across the 35-yard line in there on the stop for uh, the Carson Newman Eagles getting up off the pie. That's Trey Eller in there along with Tom Thalig at linebacker, and Thalig is hurt down on the field and is not getting up. David Thalig was not supposed to start today. They, they did have uh, Phillips in at number 55 in at uh, left linebacker, but Thalig instead has taken a place that they like the way he's played over the last two weeks, the last two weeks of the, the regular season, then again in the playoffs, so they have him starting today in place of Phillips. Thalig injured on the play. He was making the stop, and now he is able to get up under his own ability. Kim Phillips, the player we mentioned, a true freshman who had been initially listed on the starting lineup, comes in to replace the league, and now he jogs off the field under his own power, so apparently just initially shaken up that he should be all right and should be back in uh, the game. It'll be a third down play from the 37-yard line for Cameron. They need two, four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Crowd coming to their feet in support of the Carson defense and also urging on the Cameron offense. Option play for Gamble. He's got room to run. It's a sprint to the goal line. 
and knocked down at the 24-yard line. That's David Poole coming over to make the stop. He had the angle on Roosevelt Gamble, who made a great read and advanced the ball all the way inside Carson Newman territory to the 25-yard line. Roosevelt Gamble, sophomore from Midwest City. There you see his stats on the 1988 season. Great play that time on the option read. It was a great play. Uh, the defense over-pursued and Gamble found the gap and hit it uh, exactly how it's designed to be played, David. First down and 10 from the 25 for the Aggies. Give it to Whitman. And he's stacked up after he gets across the 21-yard line. Board progress marks him two there. So that will bring up a uh, second down and six play. Once again, Trey Eller in there on the stop for Carson Newman. Also, Steve Cochran in there getting up off the pile. So it'll bring up a second down and six play from the 21. Cameron's first scoring threat of the ball game. Second down and six, split backs behind Gamble. It's Whitman and Chuck Smith wide out to the far side. They'll give it to Chuck. And he bowls over the 20-yard line, but not much room there. In on the stop, Thalig leading the Carson Newman charge after a pickup of only two. So it'll bring up a third down play. And Smith's not a... Uh a breakaway threat, but he is a threat at the power four. Gets four or five yards every time he averaged over four carries a, a game this year, or a carry this year. So uh, he's an outstanding inside runner, and that's what they want out of him today for the Cameron Aggies. Chuck's a player who, who played an awfully lot last year, but this season, attitude problems or whatever got him in and out of the lineup. And finally, about two weeks ago, he got himself back into good graces of the coaches, and you see he's starting in the champion bowl. Third down and four from inside the 20-yard line for Cameron. Quick give to Whitman, and he is stacked up, and he won't make the first down, but he is right in the center of the field at about the 17-yard line, so it'll bring up a fourth down play and a, apparently a field goal situation for the Cameron offense, and possibly not a field goal situation. When you look at the statistics as far as the kicking game for Cameron goes, Steve Dawson at field goal kicking is has not had a good year at all. He's 2 for 13 in field goal attempts, but he is on the field to try one to put the first points of the board up on the Cameron side of the ledger. Jake Brownlow, wide receiver, holds for Cameron. It'll be placed at the 23. It'll be a 33-yard attempt. Looks good, but it is no good. He pulled it off to the left side, so both teams in the first quarter have driven and threatened, but then have been unable to put points on the board. A missed field goal, and Carson Newman gets the ball on the turnover. David, as you mentioned, Dawson is struggling this year on field goal. It's not his distance. He has the distance there again. You saw he had the distance. He's just been pulling them, and basically he's been pulling them left all year long. So it gives the uh, Carson Newman a good opportunity, a decent field position on the 20-yard line to start that offense once again. So Edwin Lowry comes in with the play on a first down and 10. We've just got two minutes and one second to go in the first quarter. It's a scoreless game, and it's typical. We figured that the defenses would ultimately dominate in this. The slick surface making it awfully tough for the offenses to do anything. Pitch out to Tyson. And he gets across the 20-yard line to about the 23. John Tennyson in there on the stop for the Cameron Aggies after a pickup of only about three. Charles Washington also in there defensively for the Aggies. Gain of three, second down and seven from the 23-yard line. And Tyson's going to be the workhorse all afternoon, as he has all year for Carson Newman. Outstanding running back. There you saw another display of a good quickness, able to read the holes well for the Eagles. Second down and seven for Carson Newman. Edwin Lowry, a quarterback, split backs behind him. Option pitch to Thomas. And he dives over the 30-yard line, a big gain there of about eight yards, and that will make a first down for Carson Newman. They'll spot the ball at the 32-yard line. Great play by Alvin Thomas on the option pitch from Edwin Lowry, picking up the first down and keeping the drive alive for the Carson Newman Eagles. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. If it hadn't been for that dive, I believe it would have been close for a first down. He dove for three extra yards and did get it. First down and 10. Pat Johnson splits wide to the near side of the field. On the option, it's Lowry faking in. What a hit. Stood up that time as he came across uh, was Edwin Lowry. Brian Callahan coming in with the heavy hit for Cameron after a short game. They'll mark him up just shy of the 35-yard line. 
and that will bring up a second down and eight from that position. No score here in the first quarter, and this should be the final play of the first quarter. We've wound under a half minute to go in the opening frame. Whistles blow. The ball was blown around, and now to reset it, the officials will come in, clean everything up, and then set the ball for play at that point. Second down and nine for Carson Newman from 34. Quick give inside across the 35-yard line, but after a gain of only two or three, Alvin Thomas goes down again. Brian Callahan in there on the stop, and the linebackers have been the main tacklers all year for Cameron, and they're coming through uh, again this year. And in this game, they're coming up with most of them. There is a flag down on the play, and it is a holding call. Initial uh, signal is that it's holding against Carson Newman, and so Cameron will undoubtedly take the penalty, back Carson Newman up and uh, hopefully get a little bit of a field position advantage out of the penalty. David Wild Tyson has been the heralded running back and uh, gets all the yards for Carson Newman. And, uh, the coach, Ken Sparks, and his staff believes that Thomas is their most punishing runner and the biggest threat because he's not expected to do some of the things he's done. And again, he had an outstanding game last week against Mesa, Colorado, and it was key to their victory. Time has run out in the first quarter. And if you missed the first quarter, all you've missed is a couple of missed field goals. There is no score in the ball game. A timeout on the field. We have played one quarter and the score. Carson Newman, nothing. Cameron, nothing. A champion bowl. Carson Newman has the football. Second down and 16 from their own 27-yard line. Passing situation for the Eagles. Option play. Lowry cuts up field after nothing is there. Pat Hartline forced the play, and Thomas O'Kelly made the tackle after a very short gain. It will bring up a third down and long for the Eagles. And like the Aggies have for the past three seasons, they're going to have to rely heavily on Thomas O'Kelly to cut down that option play, fill his gap because he's over on uh, the one side, uh, one defensive line side, and he really needs to fill that gap for the Aggies as he just did. Third down and long. Quick give inside to Thomas, and he bowls his way over the 35-yard line to about the 37, but he is well short of the first down, and it'll bring up a fourth down situation for Carson Newman, and they will be forced to punt. Again, Washington and Walters will drop deep for Cameron, and Jim Bales will get back into punt formation for the Eagles, and he'll get into the ball just across the 25-yard line. It appears as though punting would be a key factor. It doesn't seem as though they are having a hard time punting out there on that wet surface, but uh, maybe that'll play in the part later on. Here, there again, right there. Didn't get a good kick at all, and the ball rolls out of bounds just across the 43-yard line of Cameron, so the Aggies will get their best field position of the day here early in the second quarter of a scoreless game. They'll start first and 10 from their own 43-yard line. Again, gamble at quarterback. Uh, he has been the starter, and he played in the second half of last week's win over Pittsburgh State and played extremely well and earned the most valuable offensive player award in that game, and he was given the starting position. But if he starts to stagger, then LeVon Davis is on the bench, and Coach Brian Neighbor won't hesitate to bring him into the game. From the 40, three-yard line. Across the 45, a short gain there. That's Robert Whitman on the carry, picking up about th three or four yards to the 46-yard line. It'll bring up a second down and six play. David, both teams having uh, a little bit of success running the ball, more than more so than they probably would through the air. They're going to stick to the ground and see if they can just grind out those yards. Jeff Hudson checks into the game for Cameron as an extra lineman. Third, second down and long for Cameron from just across the 45-yard line. Give it to Chuck Smith. And a big gain for Chuck. He gets all the way across midfield, and for the first time, Cameron, uh, in the second quarter, they had moved into Carson Newman territory, and there is again another injured player on the field. That's Mike Schlechter, the free safety for the Eagles, down on the play, and the trainers are looking him over right now. 
David, as we said earlier, Chuck Smith doing what he does best, uh, not really breaking loose, but he is getting through the hole, getting five or six yards. This time he got a bigger break. Coach Brian Neighbors said Smith seems to rise to the occasion every time he's called on coming off the bench or starting whatever it is he started today. Fortunate enough to do so, he rose to that occasion, got a much-needed first down, getting them even better field position, driving the ball, keeping the clock going until the injury. That's exactly what they want out of Chuck Smith and Robert Whitman this afternoon. Schlechter's a key player for Carson Newman. He was their leading interceptor. He had six pickoffs this year, junior, 5'11", 192-pound safety, and uh, he also had a little bit of an injury problem in the final regular season game of the year with Presbyterian South Carolina, but he is now walking off the field, second player to have some kind of an injury problem. Tom Thalick also was injured earlier, but he has gotten back in there, and you see number 45, a linebacker, is back in the ball game. So Schlechter comes off under his own power, should be back. It's a first down and 10 from the Eagle 46-yard line for Cameron. Carson showing blitz. They give it to Smith, and he doesn't get much, about two yards over the left side. Again, Eller getting up off the pile. Carson Newman, outstanding offense, also a definite uh, contender in the top defensive categories, David, and led by Wagner, number 99, uh, the nose tackle, and Eller, number 99, at the defensive tackle position. Both of them outstanding linemen, big men, hard to move off the line. Coach Neighbor was worried about those two gentlemen, and they are definitely clogging things up in the middle. Second down and seven for Cameron from the 43. Gamble rolling out. Looking to throw, and now he is going to be hit behind the line, regains his balance momentarily, but is knocked down for a loss. Carson Newman with a big play defensively there. Allen Brown forcing the play and causing the loss. Also, Mike Schlechter is back in the ball game, and so uh, he apparently is fine. Nothing, no serious damage to Mike Schlechter. That's good to see that he is back in there. The loss brings up a third down and ten play for Cameron. That bootleg play, David, designed a run first, pass second. He, he wanted to go with the pass. He didn't find anyone open. His man, Jake Brown, low number 22, was not wide open, and he had a trouble with his footing and had to suffer the loss. Third and ten. Pitch it to Whitman. And not much there. No gain at all. He's knocked down as he gets across up to around the 35-yard line. Leroy Mency in there on the stop along with Tom Thalick. And so that will bring down, uh, bring up a fourth down situation for Cameron. Fourth down and nine from the Carson 45-yard line. And Steve Dawson comes on in to punt for the Aggies. And dropping deep is Pat Johnson, the man who broke an 80-yard punt return for a score in the Champion Bowl a year ago. It is a surprise that they have Dawson in the ball game. He's not had a good performance at punting in the playoffs. Gets a decent punt off here. It goes over Johnson's head. He'll let it bounce one time, and it goes into the end zone. So on the touchback, Carson Newman will have the ball first and a 10 from their own 20-yard line. Again, good effort by the coverage team getting down there just short of keeping it out of the end zone would have been a, a key play for the Cameron Aggies, but Carson Newman comes on with it. There is a timeout on the field, 10.43 to go in the second quarter. There is no score. Carson Newman nothing, Cameron nothing. Back after this. Champion Bowl from Cameron Stadium in Lawton, Oklahoma. A rainy day in December. First down and 10 for Carson Newman. Off the option, the quick give goes inside to the fullback. We uh, want to bring in our colleague Stan Cotton. He's standing by down on the sideline with his sideline report. Stan, what you got for us? I don't have a mic yet. Y'all got. Apparently having some trouble with Stan on the sideline. We'll be able to get that resolved and get it back to you shortly. We'll try to get him uh, a little bit later on. It's a second down and seven play from the 23-yard line for Carson Newman. Loose ball, mishandling the snap. Looks like Carson Newman has recovered it, though. They have dropped the ball, we believe. We do have our audio problems taken care of. Once again, we'll try to go down to Stan Cotton on the sidelines. Stan? Okay, David, right now, as we all know, it's a scoreless tie. And not only are the Eagles now fighting the Aggies, but Carson Newman is also fighting bad field position. Right now, they're on their own side of the 50, and if you'll notice the flags, if you can get a shot of that later, they're also facing a very, very heavy wind. So right now, things in favor of the Aggies. David? 
All right, Stan, it's a third down and eight situation for Carson Newman. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half of a scoreless game. Quick give inside and stacked up for no gain at all. Thomas O'Kelly in there on the stop along with Brian Callahan. The All-American Thomas O'Kelly doing what he does best, stuffing him inside uh, for a relatively no gain. And uh, the Cameron fans standing on their feet, both Carson Newman and Cameron fans, good showing today in this uh, bad weather. Kenneth Tyson was the player stacked up for very little gain. A fourth down and eight play punting situation. Bales back at around his own 10 and Washington deep at the 45. Heavy rush and the kick is blocked. Deflected toward the goal line. It is picked up by Cameron and into the end zone for the touchdown. Randy Maservi came up with the football and ran it in and special teams which played a factor in the game a year ago which went in favor of Carson Newman this time go in favor of the Cameron Aggies on the deflected punt and run back for a touchdown. There you have it, the defense scoring, David. The defense has scored in each of the playoff ball games. Here you see on the replay it is blocked by, it looks like, Brian Callahan, number 31. Missouri picks it up on the one bounce. He played it extremely well, gets into the end zone for the touchdown. As I said, Cameron has now scored in each of the playoff games this year. So now it's the extra point try by Steve Dawson. Brown low to hold. It's good. So Cameron draws first blood in the second quarter, and if I'm not mistaken, 8.48 is almost the same amount of time left when Pat Johnson struck with the punt return a year ago. Deja vu, 1986. There's a timeout on the field in the second quarter. 8.48 to go in the first half. Your score, Cameron, 7, Carson Newman, nothing. Teams have come through with points. They've done it every week through the four-week playoff season, and they have done it again. A blocked punt returned for a touchdown. Callahan on the block. Randy Messerby picking up the loose ball and running it in at 7 and nothing. and Dawson kicks the ball away. It is fielded near the 10-yard line. Willie Lundy bringing it back upfield. And he has a little bit of room, breaking one tackle, and gets across the 35-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. Just across the 35, it'll be a first down and 10 situation for the Eagles from their own 36-yard line. Can't say enough about uh, Johnson throughout the game as he uh, won the ball game pr primarily for the Eagles last year. But Lundy is also a definite threat. He had an outstanding ball game last week against Mesa, Colorado. Coaches said he contributed a lot to the win. He returned a punt for a touchdown, a key in that, fourth, or that victory last week. First down and 10 for Carson Newman, a crucial drive for the Eagles as they try to respond to the big play touchdown that has now put Cameron on the board first. A little bit of a counter option in the backfield and Tyson breaking over for a good gain on first down across the 40 yard line in there on the stop for the Cameron Aggies. Watkins on the play, and but not before Tyson had come up with a big gain on first down of about six or seven yards. It'll bring up a second and four from the 42. The rain continues to fall here at Cameron Stadium, but the enthusiasm has not been dampened, especially in light of the big play that just happened, the blocked punt and return for a touchdown for Cameron to put them ahead seven to nothing. Eight minutes to go before halftime. I formation set for the Eagles. Motion by the end. Tied in Cliff Weber. Uh, just beat the count by a step and went right across the line. And as soon as that happened, then uh, the officials blow the false start. A five-yard penalty will back uh, the Eagles up five. Weber wasn't expected to play much today, uh, David. He has a broken right collarbone. Uh, coach didn't know if he'd contribute much in the game. I think they decided they do need his size out there on the field, and that's why he's in there at this point. So after the five-yard penalty, it's a second down and nine situation from the 37-yard line. Hit and dropped in the backfield. That's Pat Hartline. Spin option that time 
by Edwin Lowry, but Hartline was not blocked, came right in and made the stop. A uh, slight loss, he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but it'll, at any rate will bring up a third and long situation, third down and nine, they'll mark it from the 37-yard line. Two leading tacklers, O'Kelly and Hartline in on that. They, if you saw just before the play, they shifted, they saw something going on inside and they shifted to it and they came out on top on that particular play, David. They didn't do so in the first, uh, the opening of the ball game. Third down and long for the Eagles from their own 37. Lowry play action, looking and he has a man, but it's incomplete. Looking out of the backfield for Vernon Turner, he was covered and Lowry threw the ball into the ground. And so the incompletion brings up a fourth down and nine play. And once again, the Eagles are forced to punt. Just under seven minutes to go before halftime, Cameron leads at seven to nothing. And again, the Aggie defense is playing superbly. They gave up a, a, a big drive, really the very first time Carson Newman had the football, but not much since. Once again, in punt formation is Bales. He had his last one blocked. And this one is a bad kick. It might have gotten tipped. A flag goes down as the ball is down at about the 42-yard line. But a flag goes down, and I believe it's going to be a roughing the kicker violation against the Aggies. Look like Joe, Watch, uh, Joe Watkins running into the punter, David. That's one of those, either you go for it and uh, take the penalty if you don't get the ball, or you just uh, stay away from it. That They chose to go with it for the second time in a row. Watkins bumped into the kicker and unfortunately came out with, a, for Cameron, a penalty roughing the kicker. That is a very big play because it will give the Eagles an automatic first down, and Cameron, with the poor punt, was going to get some kind of... Uh, uh, a good field position. Apparently it's a it's a running into the kicker and not a roughing the kicker and so that is only a five yard violation as opposed to the 15 yard roughing violation so running into the kicker will still bring up fourth down. So fourth down and four now and Bale standing back at his 30 yard line again Cameron looking like now they'll peel back for the return Low kick, hits at the 28, bounces backward toward the 30-yard line, and that's where Cameron will take over first down and 10 from their own 28. And David, as we mentioned earlier, punting would become a factor of the ball getting wet, getting waterlogged a little bit. The punters are having a hard time now, as we've seen over the last three punts, especially for Carson Newman. And they haven't gotten the foot on the ball as they would like, and then again, it's not rolling as it would on a dry artificial surface. So Cameron has the ball and the lead late in the first half. Campbell still at quarterback. Option. Pickup of about five. Gets out to the 34-yard line. And a flag again on the play, and it appears to be holding against the Cameron Aggies. Mike Schlechter there uh, playing official and signaling the uh, holding violation against Cameron, and so it will nullify a five-yard gain on first down and back Cameron back deep in their own territory and the field position factor that uh, our colleague on the sideline Stan Cotton alluded to earlier now shifts back in favor of Carson Newman if the Eagle defense can hold three and done and they get a punting situation then they can have the ball possibly near midfield so it's a crucial down uh, and a crucial series for Cameron. Jake Brownlow splits out to the near side first and 20 for Cameron. Chuck Smith with a big game, getting almost all of the penalty yardage back. Smith hit it after only a two-yard game, picks up the four more yards after the point of uh, contact. We have a player down on the field right now, David. Trying to find out exactly who uh, the injured player is. He's pointed away from us, can't quite see who is down on the field. Look at it on the replay and see if we can't see it again. There he goes, hit. It is a player who originally hit the Smith is still down on the field. We'll see in just a second if we can identify that player. Here he is. He's standing up now. And again, it's a Thalic, uh, injured for the second time. He comes off uh, on his own accord, though. Uh, good effort by Thalic on that tackle as he really got in uh, Chuck Smith's legs and tied him up to, as the others could come over and uh, tackle Smith. Holding his arm in a 
rather awkward position as he came off the field, so we'll get some kind of a check on his status and see if he will be uh, available to come back. Maybe we can check in with Stan Cotton on the sideline and get some kind of an injury update with that. It'll bring up a second down and 10 play from just short of the 30. Big room. And once again, it's Chuck Smith, and he picks up about nine yards, and he'll be awfully close to the first down. David, something we didn't necessarily allude to at the beginning of the ball game. The wind has now become a factor as we see it coming strongly out of the south uh, to the backs or to the fans, uh, the home field fans' face. It is directly going uh, toward them. It, it's beginning to swirl down in the Cameron Stadium on the turf. They say it's swirling down there. As you can see, the players' jerseys uh, beginning to shift quite a bit. Third down and two from the 38-yard line. Option play smelled out beautifully and dropped for a loss by Allen Brown, the defensive end, Roosevelt Gamble, uh, making a, a mistake on the read that time. Probably should have given it off to the fullback on the option. He didn't do it, and Allen Brown, the defensive end for Carson Newman, came up and made a fine stop, dropping him for a loss. It'll bring up a fourth down play and punting situation for the Cameron Aggies with just about four and a half minutes to go before halftime. Dawson again in punt formation. And he fields the snap having go down to one knee. A line drive kick is fielded on the hop and brought up to the 20. 25-yard line before he's finally knocked down. Mike Schlecker on the return for Carson Newman, and he brings it all the way out to the 35-yard line. Good punt by Dawson, but those are the scary kinds of punt. The low line drive gets to the receiver uh, quicker than the offense or the uh, coverage team from Cameron can get down there. A lot of times coaches hold their breath on such a play because that's when the, uh, the return team can set up a wall and release downfield. Said 20, 35-yard line, it is the 25-yard line, so with 4.27 to go, this could be the final possession of the first half for Carson Newman. Fumbling the snap and Lowry falls on it. Second time this quarter that he's had trouble holding onto the ball on the center snap. And Lowry falls straight on it after a drop of, uh, after a loss of about a yard. So it'll bring up a second down and 11 play from the 24 yard line. You know, the longer they play out there, the slicker that ball is going to get. They're shuffling footballs in and out, but there's no way to avoid that that thing is going to get awfully wet. It's a second down and 11 play from the 24. Option. Pitch to Tyson. And ridden out of bounds by Tennyson. John Tennyson, the eagle safety coming up and forcing the play and driving Tyson out of bounds for a loss. Again, Pat Hartline mixing it up in there, David, in defensive end position. He got in Lowry's face uh, on the initial line of scrimmage, forcing it outside, forcing Lowry to pitch the ball. And therefore, it was carried uh, outside as Tennyson could make his coverage as well. Third down and 13 for Carson Newman. You would figure it's a passing situation, but they faced third and long before, and they've only thrown one pass, and that was an incompletion on an outlet route. They had double wideouts to the near side. Give it to Thomas, and he is stacked up after a very little gain. Chris Crosley making the stop for the Aggies, and also Joe Watkins in there on the play for Cameron. So very little gain will bring up a fourth and long situation, and once again, it's punting time for the Carson Newman Eagles. Winding under three and a half minutes to go before halftime. Washington will step in at around midfield. As a matter of fact, he's on the Aggie side of the uh, field. The punt, the wind is catching this punt and blowing it back. It's going to be an awfully short punt. Negative yardage. The punter downs his own punt at the 20-yard line. How many times have you seen that happen? David, exactly what we said just a moment ago. The wind is becoming a definite factor out there as it gets up uh, outside the dome area. It is, uh, the wind is swirling. Now it's coming out of the south-southwest. Uh, peculiar way for the wind to come, but it got up in that. You can see the, the ball being lifted, and then it, it just drifted toward the punter, and he had to down his own ball. The length on the punt, minus one yard. So Cameron now has the ball first and ten from the Carson Newman 21-yard line. Golden opportunity for the Aggies. Give it to Smith, and he's met hard. As he gets across the line of scrimmage, not much room at all there. 
Leroy Mincy in on the stop, also John Champagne there for the Carson Eagles. Under three minutes to go, seven to nothing. Cameron has the lead and the football deep in Eagle territory after a wind aided punt or wind hindered punt that only went for a negative yardage. Second down and ten. Looking to throw and on this quick out to Jake Brownlow, Gamble gets absolutely nothing on that ball and it drops well short of the intended receiver Brownlow, so now we'll bring up a third down and eight, and that's precisely the uh, not the situation that the Cameron coaches wanted to get into. They had outstanding field position, and now they're facing third down and eight. I think Gamble saw something in there uh, as Jake Brownlow released on the short out pattern, and he wanted to ground the ball. Uh, instead of taking uh, suffering the interception, the interception would have taken it the length of the field. He saw that. I had to react quickly to it, decided to ground the ball, kill the clock, and then take the timeout as he is there. Cameron has taken a timeout with uh, two and a half minutes to go before uh, halftime. We have a, a report, I believe, that we could go to Stan Cotton down on the sideline. Stan, what do you have for us? David, in a football game like this where the weather conditions are so bad, you have to look at two things, really. Field position, number one, and then two, the kicking game. Right now, of course, Cameron has the best field position so far, and the Aggies have scored the only touchdown in the ball game off a black punt. And the Aggies, with a couple of good plays coming up, could possibly score again. And number 45, John Thaley, left shoulder, he's all right. He's back in the ball game. Back to you, Dad. It's good news that Thaley will be back in. He is a, a vital player to the uh, Carson Newman defense playing linebacker, and so it is good to hear that he will be back in the ball game. As he mentioned, a big play coming up here, though, third down and eight with 2.36 to go before halftime. We'll see what kind of a play they were able to dream up after the timeout. Big play for Cameron offensively. Also a big play for the Carson Newman defense. They need the whole amount on this particular play, David. Gamble looking to throw. He is rushed and now gets out of the pocket. Has room going toward the corner. He gets inside the 10 and runs out of bounds. Just outside the five-yard line, he has the first down. Cameron with a big play on the improvisation from Roosevelt Gamble. He picks up the yardage inside the 10-yard line. Cameron has first and goal. And here's the replay. He reads uh, nothing there in the pass. He sees the open gap. He gets through a couple of tacklers, David and decides to get inside the 10-yard line, takes the uh, outside route, and uh, stops the clock to set up something else for the offense. Back to live action, first and goal from the four. Double tight end set. Following Chuck Smith's block off the option is Gamble, and he just gets near the two-yard line, and it'll bring up a second and goal from that point as we wind near two minutes to go before the half. It looked as though Gamble wanted to give to Smith a kind of miscommunication on the uh, handoff, David. Uh, Smith was angry with himself after the play, decided that he uh, did should have taken the ball, and he should have because he was open. Gamble was not. Second down and goal. Motion on the left side. Flags fly. Whistles stop play. And along the left side of the offensive front, that's Chaz Stover, who beat the count just a little bit, and so that will back Cameron up. The illegal motion penalty, or illegal procedure penalty, will bring up a, a second down and goal from the seven-yard line, and those are precisely the mistakes you don't want to make down deep in enemy territory. 1.48 to go before halftime. Cameron leads it 7 to nothing on the strength of a blocked punt that was returned for the touchdown. Brian Callahan blocking a Carson Newman punt, Randy Missouri picking up the loose ball for the Aggies and rambling in from the five yard line. A punt that was blown back by a fierce wind has given Cameron this outstanding field position and they now face second down and goal from the seven. Brownlow in motion toward the line and now they'll pitch to him on the reverse. Trying to get outside, it's hemmed in, a good cutback by Jake, he gets inside the three, but finally knocked down, a big hit there uh, by Chad Sparks, the coach's son, coming in uh, to make the stop for the Carson Newman Eagles. They smelled that one out beautifully, did the uh, Eagle defense. Uh, Brownlow never had any room to run, had no place to try to turn the corner. Four or five players over there defensively stringing that play out. Exactly right, David. It was an outstanding running effort by Jake Brownlow just to get close to the line of scrimmage but it was a key play for the Carson Newman defense and they rose to that occasion. 
third and goal from the three, 45 seconds to go before halftime. Option, gamble, and he is stopped short. And Cameron will probably be forced to call another timeout and try to decide what they'll do on fourth down and goal from the two. The angle is terrible for a field goal if they were to bring it in on that far hash mark. The clock winds under 24 seconds. Now it stops. And Gamble calls the timeout so Cameron can talk things over. And David, that is a bad place for Dawson, especially on the field goal attempt. He, uh, as we mentioned earlier, pulls a lot of his kicks to the left, and that would be lined up at the left side of the of the goal post. Uh, coach, uh, Cameron coaches right now are wondering exactly what they'll do. They might bring in uh, Mike Winchester to uh, attempt the field goal. He's their short field goal kicker. He kicks barefooted. He's very accurate. He hasn't had much playing time, though, and I don't know if they'll bring him in at this key point in the ball game as of yet. Carson Newman bringing their entire defensive unit over onto the sideline during this timeout. Carson Newman is an outstanding story under Ken Sparks, their coach. He has been there eight seasons and has put together just an absolutely remarkable record, 69, 25, and 1, a winning percentage of 732, and that ranks him second among all NAIA active coaches. Harold Horton of Central Arkansas is on top of that list, and since he has come to take over the program, he has absolutely worked miracles. This is their fourth appearance in the finals, and uh, they have won championships in two of those years and shared a championship in another with Central Arkansas. 24 seconds left to go before halftime, and now the team's coming back out on the field after the Cameron timeout. They only have one left, but it really doesn't matter because if they don't get it on the end zone on this, they'll turn the ball over on downs and the clock will run out. Fourth down and goal from the two-yard line. Big play here. Give it to Smith, and he falls into the end zone for the touchdown. And David Smith uh, put them on, uh, tied the ball game last week with a run similar to that uh, against Pittsburgh State of Kansas, and then he does it again this time. Coach, uh, here we see the replay. Bulls his way over here initially at the line of scrimmage, but gains those two yards as he, his strength just carries the defense of Carson Newman into the end zone for the touchdown. Good blocking up front by Chaz Stover that time to clear the way, but Smith using every bit of his 265 pounds to bowl across the goal line for the touchdown. It's a 13 to nothing game pending the extra point by Dawson with 20 seconds to go before halftime. Brownlow again to hold. Looks good, and it is. So now it is 14 to nothing, Cameron, and that is a major touchdown because now you put Carson Newman in the pot, in the situation where they must score twice uh, just to get back and tie the football game. And the the way the weather has adversely affected the Carson Newman offense, they outside of an opening drive really haven't had much of an opportunity to uh, to move the football field position, as uh, we alluded to earlier, has not worked in Carson Newman's favor at all, and they have been struggling to just to get out of their own end, let alone try to score. The first time they had the football, they got it from the 30-yard line and all the way to the Cameron 30-yard line before they were finally bogged down and a Luis Reves field goal missed. That was their only scoring opportunity of the first half and they have not come close to threatening the Cameron goal line since. It's been all in the second quarter, David, and that's exactly the fact that we made uh, earlier with the wind. The wind conditions have been at Cameron's back the entire second quarter, uh, meaning that the uh, Carson Newman offense and defensive units have been facing that strong wind out of the south-southwest, and it's a forceful wind, and it affected the punt. It affected both punts, as a matter of fact. That's why Cameron decided, I'm sure, to go for the block. They did get it, and then again, they... Uh, had an opportunity of Carson Newman just couldn't execute on the ball. It, was a, it looked to be a well-punted ball by Rivez. It goes straight up in the air and comes back down for a minus one yard net. And uh, that sets up the Cameron offense just to drive uh, 21 yards for the touchdown. Here's the kick by Dawson. And it's fielded inside the 10. Lundy gets up across the 25, still on his feet, still going. He's to the 30, and finally ridden out of bounds just across the 32-yard line. So with 10 seconds to go, 
Carson Newman will have the football and one last chance maybe for a long pass. Here's the Cameron scoring drive, 20 yards, just 2 minutes and 52 seconds. And uh, the, the run by, uh, by Chuck Smith, not 57 yards, but the, uh, the run by Chuck Smith was 2 yards for the touchdown on the fourth down and goal play. Steve Dawson's point after made it a 14 to nothing game. Here is possibly the final play of the very first half. Okay, now do we give it inside to Alvin Thomas? He picks up two or three yards. Okay, tell Joe to let us know. We'll kill the and then we need to know. That will do it. We have wound down to the end of the first half. The score at halftime is Cameron 14, the Carson Newman Eagles. Nothing. We are trying to get an interview with uh, head coach Brian Neighbor uh, just before halftime to get his thoughts on how his, uh, or just before the halftime intermission begins, just to get his thoughts on how the game has gone. Obviously, it has gone all in favor of uh, the Cameron Aggies. Everything that they have wanted to happen has happened for Cameron. They got the, the breaks to go their way on the special teams, and offensively, they haven't staggered so much that, uh, that we have seen in past weeks as far as that team is concerned. Uh, the offensive unit has had trouble moving the ball inside the 20-yard lines, and whenever they do get it inside enemy territory, they've had a hard time putting it in and scoring. Uh, that was not the case so far this time, and if, if you were to look at it from a defensive standpoint, as far as Cameron is concerned, Stacy, they have come up with the, the kind of defense that they have played all year long, and especially in the, in the playoffs. They haven't allowed much at all. That's exactly right, David. Uh, they let a few drives get away from them in the opening the ball game. Uh, I think it was a little bit of surprise on how strong Carson Newman was in their front positions, their lineman positions. They were blowing Cameron completely off the ball uh, in the trenches, but Cameron responded well. They adjusted, they shifted, they've been stunning a little bit, and that's uh, come to their benefit because the Aggies are now reading the option. They're reading the inside play to Tyson, who is himself a punishing runner along with Thomas, and they've risen to the occasion as they have so many times after a slow start. Cameron Van has now made their way onto the field. I understand now that Stan Cotton is standing by on the field with Cameron coach Brian Neighbors. Stan, take it away. All right, I'm with Cameron coach Brian Neighbor. Coach, your team leads 14 to nothing, and uh, we're talking a second ago. Field position and the kicking game and weather like this will do it to you every time, and so far you've come out on the top end of the stick there. Well, special teams, uh, you know, I figured it'd be the third element when you had the wind and the wind's picked up, but, you know, we got the big uh, turnover. We score off it, and then the next big turnover. So, you know, we're, we're happy to be where we're at. How important for you as a coach to be ahead of Carson Newman at halftime? Jesus, it's important to be ahead of any time, no, it's it's not, you know, we just wanted to be there, and you know, you had the win factors. 14 points is a lot of points. We think we got a great defense, so you, you give us 14 points, and you know, that's a big bulge. And we're just happy to be here, and we hope we can play good ball and take care of the special teams ourselves, and, and things should be all right. Any adjustments for you at all at halftime? Uh, I don't know. You know, I've talked to my coaches. We're pretty pleased with things the way they're going, and you know, we're not going to do anything fancy as long as the score stays like it is. Coach, congratulations so far. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks to Cameron Coach uh, Brian Neighbor. David back to you. And thank you a lot. We are at halftime and a happy but wet Brian Neighbor has his team ahead and that is something that they are not used to having is a comfortable lead at halftime. Again, it's on the strength of special teams and the offense coming through. We are at halftime. We'll take a break. Your score is Cameron 14 and Carson Newman nothing back with halftime festivities right after this. Of, as far as history is concerned, and at halftime it's a 14-0 lead for Cameron. I'm joined by Dr. Charles Morris, and he is the director of championship events for the NAIA. And Dr. Morris, uh, impressions of the first half, it's been a kind of a dreary day as far as weather is concerned, but there have been some exciting moments. Uh, it's really a great contest, David. It's very well fought. The defenses have been tough. Of course, the wind kicked up there a little bit after the game got underway, and uh, Cameron's defense capitalized on the block kick. And then, of course, had control uh, to get out and close and score that last touchdown just before the expiration of the second quarter. But we're having a good ball game so far. I know you've been working awfully hard all week long, not only to help preparation for the telecast, but tell us how that has gone. And now your job is, is almost over. You get to sit back and enjoy the game. Your hard work is already done. That's right, David. I'm a spectator along with your viewing audience. And, of course, we're very proud of the fact that KWSO is aboard and WTVK TV over in Knoxville. And, the Ag Satellite Network, uh, a little over 21 million potential viewers, and uh, we're very proud of that fact, and they're getting to see uh, championship football at its best. All right, Dr. Morris, I appreciate you stopping off and taking 
time to out of your schedule to talk to us and uh, maybe with any bit of luck these teams that made history this year by having a rematch will do it for a third time around and we can talk again next year thank you very much David all right now we also have some more special guests here on this halftime and Jan Stratton is standing by right now on the field with some very special guests who have made the trip down to Cambridge Stadium so let's go now to Jan uh, with her special guests and her interviews Jan as you can see, it's a cold, wet day in southwest Oklahoma, but the rain has not dampened the enthusiasm of the teams nor the fans. We have some very special guests who are braving the elements today to watch this famous rematch of the Cameron Carson Newman Eagles and the Cameron Aggies, one of which is Senator Roy B. Hooper of Lawton, Oklahoma. Senator Hooper, Governor Bellman, you are his representative today. He could not make it because of the weather. Signed uh, a proclamation. What did that proclamation say? Well, we're excited about uh, Carson Newman coming to Lawton, Oklahoma. We're excited about Cameron once again being in the national finals and uh, the governor wishes he could have been here today but wanted me to express his uh, sincere appreciation for Lawton uh, representing the state so well in the Cameron Aggies. And the south southwest part of Oklahoma has received a lot of statewide recognition as well this year, thanks in part to many of you in the legislature. Well, we're really excited about what's happening in southwest Oklahoma. We're just excited about these finals and hope Cameron wins. Thank you, Senator Hooper. Our next guest is from Carson Newman from Jefferson City, Tennessee. And come on in, Ed. He's Ed Hart. Uh, he is representing the president of Carson Newman, Cordell Maddox, who because of this very terrible weather we're having could not make it. I understand there was a fall commencement last night, which That's he, right. of course, had to attend. But you are here in his stead, and you're the faculty athletic representative of Carson Newman. That's right, Welcome, man. Ed. Thank you very much. We're happy to be here in southwest Oklahoma. We would have liked to have had a little better weather for us. It's That's very cold great. and wet. It is very gracious of you to say that. It has been beautiful, believe it or not, until this week. Now, this is not something new for the Carson Newman Eagles. Is that right? That's correct. Carson Newman has been in the finals now. This is our fourth time in the last five years. We're really excited about being here. We won it three times, and uh, we'd like to win it again today. But it's it's a tough game out there today. But we're excited. It's um, We've been treated royally here in Lawton by the folks at Cameron and by the people from the First Baptist Church at Lawton and all of the fans have just been commenting about how they've been they've so been welcomed and treated and hauled all over the town and well, we really appreciate we're glad. it. And not only is your football team fine, but your school as a whole is also an also fine establishment. In fact, you were explaining to me a little while ago that there is a, a long-range plan the president has set out for Carson Newman. That's correct. We're a small liberal arts college uh, sponsored by the Baptists in East Tennessee and we have just this year had a record enrollment of over 1900 students but also the, under the leadership of Dr. Maddox we have been preparing a 15 year plan for the year 2001 which is our 150th anniversary of the school and we've got a lot of ambitious goals that we're real excited about both academically as well as other programs on the campus including the athletic program. Well congratulations on your fine team and your fine school. Thank, thank you Ed you, Hart. Thank you very our next guest is Cameron President Dr. Don Davis. And Dr. Davis, you have, you're not dressed for the weather for this very moment. He had a rain suit on until just a few minutes before he went on the air. He said, I want to show my Cameron t-shirt. And you are indeed wearing it proudly today. That's right. We're all proud to be Cameron Aggies today. It's a great day in southwest Oklahoma, despite the weather, because the weather is the only cold thing here at the stadium. It's a sellout crowd. The fans are enthusiastic, and it's really just a, a great climax to a, a wonderful year's activity here at Cameron. That brings me to my next question. This has been a somewhat of a banner year for Cameron University. Has it not, Dr. Davis? It certainly has. We've been authorized for graduate programs. We've had our accreditation visit. We've had uh, a great year athletically. We've received appropriations from the state regents and the legislature for our new health, physical education, and recreation center. I'm afraid that one of these days I'm going to wake up and it's going to be just have been a great dream because it has been a genuinely good year. Well, and we, we've had a good time here with Carson Newman too. This is the first time that two schools have ever played for the national championship two consecutive years. That has never happened in the 32 year history of the NAIA and we can't think of a better school to be paired with than Carson Newman because while we have a great rivalry on the field there's been a kind of a special warmth developed 
between these two institutions, and we, we really have a good feeling for them. And, uh, you know, we'd play them again next year for the National Championship. The NIA, that's <laughs> right. We, we would be here. And this is the second time you have we've had the rematch. First time on Cameron Surf, uh, Turf, though, is it? And that's right. And we uh, have never hosted a national football championship uh, here in Lawton. And so we were very pleased that our fans did get to see the championship game here. Thank you, Dr. Davis, very much. Now we'd like to have a brief message message by Malcolm So Cold. I can't talk from the NAIA and the two fine schools competing in this championship bowl. Athletics and education are synonymous in the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, where nearly 500 colleges and universities are committed to the philosophy of strong academic standards for all student athletes. Founded in 1940 as the National Association of Intercollegiate Basketball, the NAIA became a multi-sport organization in 1952 and currently administers national championship events for men and women in 22 sports. The NAIA has been a pioneer in many important issues of collegiate athletics, including opportunities for minority students and the implementation of a strong policy against substance abuse. The association's motto, Athletics Education for Leadership, Character, Citizenship, stands as an ever-present reminder of the NAIA's commitment to higher education in America. He left twice 
uh, in the first half with injuries, but was able to come back into the ball game and still be a significant factor uh, defensively for Carson Newman. It was good to see him back in. Cameron had a chance to score uh, on a drive that went deep into Carson Newman territory, but in the first quarter they failed whenever Steve Dawson's field goal attempt sailed wide to the left side. Chuck Smith was the workhorse in the first half uh, for Cameron Stacy, and once again it was on that play that Tom Thaley went down, but again he was able to come back out. That's exactly right. He is a key part of the defense for the Carson Newman Eagles, and uh, there again, uh, he got injured, but he did it, uh, stopping a key run by uh, Chuck Smith. This, of course, is the play that we showed you uh, earlier, that this was the block punt in the very first score of the football game. Special teams coming through on the Brian Callahan block, and uh, Randy Maservi running it in for the touchdown. Steve Dawson coming on to add the extra point, and it was really a big confidence booster for Dawson to get the extra point to go through, because he is here's a guy who's... Uh, 37 extra points on the season and he had uh, missed seven of them and yet he was able to uh, able to convert that one and put Cameron ahead seven to nothing again Tom Thaley going down we're talking injury prone guy here in the early going he and Chuck Smith having some serious collisions battle of the 45s and uh, Thaley was getting the worst end of it but it was a little bit of, a, of an arm injury really not that big of a, of a major injury so he was back in at a short punt but Cameron deep in uh, Carson Newman territory, a fourth down and goal play. Chuck Smith blasting over for the touchdown. Dawson's extra point uh, was good, and that made it a 14-0 ball game. That coming on a fourth and goal play with about 20 seconds to go before halftime, and Cameron uh, now has the lead uh, by two touchdowns. And Stacy, just impressions of the first half, you would think that if all things considered, that is almost an insurmountable lead for Carson Newman at halftime especially with the weather conditions, David, once again. Of course, anything can happen, as we've already seen. Uh, two quick uh, key plays by the Eagles can bring them right back in, and it's by no means over as a, in no championship ball game it is at this point in the ball ballgame. Uh, can't say enough about the running of Chuck Smith for the Cameron University Aggies. Uh, he was not expected to do so well. He hasn't done that well in all the games up to this point uh, in the season. Uh, they brought him down as we take a look at the half, first half statistics, David. Uh, there you see key first downs. Uh, it's The Eagles are leading it. Again, it was from that uh, opening drive or the opening two drives by the Eagles as Tyson just uh, consistently ran uh, 10, uh, 12 yards per carry. And then the, the Aggies finally uh, rose to the occasion and figured out what he was doing and what the entire Eagle defense was doing and began slowing them down. You see that, of course, we have no yards passing. Uh, Cameron only attempted one pass. Carson Newman attempted just one pass, and both of those were incomplete. Surprisingly, on a day that is as uh, terrible as far as field conditions go as this, uh, there, there had been no turnovers. There, there have been some loose footballs on the field. There have been the occasional penalty, but there has not been, uh, there haven't been any turnovers, and that is really a, a stunner uh, whenever you consider at this point uh, of the ball game with the weather conditions, you would figure there would be some kind of turnovers. Captains, of course, meeting on the field to get things arranged for the second half. Cameron had won the toss in the first half and had decided to play defense, and uh, in the second half, uh, things will switch around. We'll go ahead and take uh, a timeout, and when we come back, we'll have the third quarter action. We're at halftime, but we're about to start the third quarter. Here's your score, Cameron 14, Carson Newman nothing. A kickoff again uh, to start the second half. They kicked off to start the ball game, and Carson Newman wanting the ball to begin uh, the third quarter, and that's a good move on the part of Carson Newman in that they realize they've got to get points on the board and quickly. Line, drive, kick. Fumbled by Johnson inside the five, but now he picks it up and has some room around the sideline. And hemmed in quickly at the 15-yard line. Uh, big stop there for Cameron. The Aggies making the play. Uh, Dallas Hodgson coming in to make the stop for Cameron. So it'll set up a first down and 10 play. Bad field position once again for Carson Newman. That's exactly right, David. But I think they have it set to where they will have the win in the uh, final quarter. So if it, things come down to that, they believe and that's what their offense will need is that, that win factor. And again, a good choice on the coin toss at halftime. First down and 10 from the 14-yard line for Carson Newman. They trail it by 14 points. And again, a miscommunication on the snap. And a loose ball is picked up by Cameron. The Aggies have it. It's Thomas O'Kelly with the football. 
All-American once again in on the play. David, he's going to come up with key plays throughout the day as he has throughout the year. Pro scouts are definitely looking at this uh, young man. He is a senior this year. Uh, he, he attended his first year at Rice University in Houston. Outstanding player and quality player as we take a look at the replay. It looks like a mix-up with Lowry in the backfield and Lineman gets in on it and the ball is fumbled apparently before it hits the ground and Cameron comes up with it. Pulling guard Jay Floyd got in the way and that knocked the ball loose. It's a first in and 10 from the 12 for the Aggies. Give it to Chuck Smith and he gets across the 10 yard line. Beer at, uh, beer at its best, David. Uh, that was uh, the misdirection give as uh, the backs in the backfield crisscrossed and uh, Chuck Smith going over right side and gaining uh, some key four or five yards on the carry. Tom Thaling again on the stop for the Carson Newman Eagles, but not before Chuck had come up with a five-yard gain. It will bring up a second down and five situation from the Carson Newman seven-yard line. We are just underway in the third quarter. A fumble has given Cameron incredible field position. They already have a two-touchdown lead. Gamble on the option is knocked down behind the line. He lost control of the ball, but did come up with it. A loss on the play of about three or four yards in there making the stop was John Champagne for Carson Newman. Nice job there defensively as he forced the play and allowed Gamble to have absolutely no room to run and dropped him for a loss. It'll bring up third and seven. Here's as though the rain just waits for the players to hit the field and then it comes down. It's coming down uh, streaking right now, David. And again, that's the factor of the ball game as the, the fumble comes up on uh, the loose ball. Third down and seven. Give it to Whitman. And he lunges forward and falls down just short of the five-yard line, but the ball is kept squarely in the center of the field. Leroy Mincy in there on the stop along with Thalig for Carson Newman, but uh, they squared the ball centerly, uh, they centered the ball squarely in the middle of the field because that brings on Steve Dawson for a chance to kick uh, a field goal. He's had a hard time, as we have mentioned all season long. He's already missed one field goal earlier, and now he'll try another one. The ball will be set at the 13-yard line, so it'll be a 23-yard field goal, just about three yards outside of a normal extra point range. Brown low to hold. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. And David, that does not surprise me that they chose to go uh, with the field goal as uh, he's gotten the two extra points. Coach believes that's just uh, almost point-blank range right there, and they decide to go with it, and it comes out in the Cameron University favor again. A key was the fumble by Carson Newman on their opening play of the second half. So Cameron has scored in the third quarter. We will take a timeout, a timeout on the field with the score. Uh, 17 to nothing, 12.54 to go in the third quarter. You see your score, 17 to nothing. Cameron leading Carson Newman. 12.54 to go in the third quarter. A Steve Dawson field goal has put Cameron ahead by 17 points. The kickoff headed toward Willie Lundy, and it goes all the way through the end zone. Before we give too much credit to Dawson's leg, we must once again remind you that there's a tremendous, when you see in the background there momentarily over Willie Lundy's head, the ground level flags that were whipping in that direction, and all you really need to do is get the ball up in the air, and it will sail in that direction. And as Stacy mentioned earlier to start the uh, third quarter, the Carson Newman Eagles decided to take the ball to start the quarter, uh, hopefully to have the, the wind at their back in the fourth. They'll definitely need it now because they need three scores just to tie it, three touchdowns to take the lead. First down and 10 from the 20. And another great defensive play by Cameron. There is absolutely nowhere for Edwin Lowry to go and Thomas O'Kelly making the stop for the Aggies. Second down and 10 after no gain on that play. And the rain continues to fall. And you said earlier, Stacy, that the rain waits for the players. There you see the scoring drive. Four plays, 15 yards, and a 23-yard field goal uh, by Steve Dawson. 17 to nothing is the score. Cameron in the lead. Give inside. And a pickup across the 20-yard line, just short of the 23. And David, that's an option play that uh, Coach Ken Sparks of Carson Newman said is going to have to work for his team to be successful. It's worked all year when they've won, and uh, he believes it's going to have to be the key to keep keeping the Cameron defense from keen on Kenneth Tyson in the backfield to open up that option and uh, to give them several different looks. Alvin Thomas on the carry. Thomas and Tyson are your backs behind quarterback Edwin Lowry. 
sophomore quarterback for the Eagles. He is facing a tremendous task. His team's down by 17. A little delay give inside there to Tyson, and he gets very little yardage and stopped well short of the first down. Hartline in on the stop along with Miles Thompson. It'll bring up a fourth down and six situation, and once again, Carson Newman has to punt into that ferocious wind coming out of the west. Bale stands back at about his 10-yard line. Heavy rush, and he gets the punt away, but it's not a very good kick. Bounces short of the 45, peels backward inside the 40, and finally it goes, the ball is advanced forward, and it goes out of bounds. It looked like uh, that Cameron will have the ball inside the 40-yard line. Exactly. Pat Hartline picked up the ball, David. Uh, he wasn't supposed to, but he did. He saw an opening over there. If he had a couple more yards, he thought maybe he could uh, break it left and, and go into the end zone. Of course, he, that didn't happen as the wet, slippery surface uh, kept him from doing so. Once again, the second time Cameron's had the ball in the second half, and they've got great field position, this time at the 36-yard line. Split back set behind Roosevelt Gamble, the quarterback, and they'll give it to Whitman, and he picks up two or three across the 35-yard line, down to around the 33. They'll mark it just short of the 32-yard line to bring up a second down and six play. You have to think the, the Cameron uh, offensive uh, coordinator is uh, very pleased with what's going on out there uh, at this point as they're just grinding out the yards, uh, eating the time off the clock, David, as the offense continues to control possession. Second down and seven. Give it to Whitman again. Stacked up after very little gain, and it will bring up a uh, third down play for the Cameron Aggies. We're joined now at our broadcast position by the Cameron Athletic Director, Bill Carter. And Bill has worked awfully hard this week to get things going. And Bill, congratulations on a job well done. We had some rough weather, but it looks like we got a good crowd and a good ball game. Well, it's amazing that these people have turned out uh, on a day like today, even though you know we had our ticket sales uh, before. Uh, we had 7,000 sold in advance, but right now uh, it's just amazing the crowd we have with the weather conditions. Third down and three, 10 minutes to go third quarter. Give it to Whitman again, and he breaks across for a first down. He gets inside the 25-yard line, just short of the 20. Cameron's drive stays alive, first down and 10. Robert Whitman, a nice run inside. Bill, continuing with you, the, uh, the national scope of this game has an outstanding benefit for both schools involved, both Carson Newman and Cameron get to be blasted all across the country, and it's good to see such a good support uh, by the fans from both sides. Well, uh, the Lawton community and the school and administration and the athletic staff, it, this must take great pride in what the, the thing we've put on here today because uh, we got this game because, because of the job we did in the first four playoff games that we've hosted in the last two years. And this certainly is a tribute to Lawton, uh, to our school. And, uh, you know, this crowd, we've probably got eight to 9,000 people here on a, on a day of very adverse co uh, conditions. But this, this town, you know, it's interesting what athletics will do to bring a community together. And, you know, Southwest Oklahoma has had some tough times in the last two or three years. But everybody got behind this effort, and it's and this could be the reward today. Whitman's game brought it up a second down and three play, not much there inside, and so it'll bring up third down and short uh, for the Cameron Aggies. Well, Bill, I know, like I said, you've done an outstanding job all week long. We appreciate the effort that you put forward in uh, in making sure that things have gone just so, and it's a good game actually to go out on if Cameron does make the switch up to NCAA Division II as planned, and it's we've gone out in style. It'll be a great win if we can hold on and win this thing. Uh, we want to thank KSWO who really helped us uh, in the push for the ticket sales. And, and I'd like to thank the Lawton community and uh, everyone associated with the school with all the help. You don't put this on with a lot of great people behind it. And we'd like to thank them all. Okay, Bill Carter. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Cameron's athletic director of Bill Carter stopping by at our broadcast position. And we appreciate him stopping by. We appreciate his help in uh, helping put this football game together. Robert Whitman, another good run. And so it'll bring up a first down. Whitman, the workhorse on this drive. Chuck Smith has been on another drive. But this time, Whitman gets the big gain and sets up a first down and goal situation for Cameron. Inside the Carson Newman 10, they'll spot it at the 7. Split backs behind Gamble, and they give it to Smith, and he is still on his feet and just short of the goal line. They'll mark it at the one. 
another outstanding run by Smith, David. Uh, he just continues to pour it on that second effort and, and is uh, benefiting the Yankees. What has surprised me, though, is uh, Cameron uh, apparently started out the ball game by working on the right side of the uh, Carson Newman defense. Now they are shifting things around. They're not uh, going to one side or the other. They're mixing it up well enough that Carson Newman doesn't know exactly where the ball is coming from. Great second effort run there, as you saw, by Chuck Smith. It brings up a second and goal from just outside the one-yard line. Sneak. Touchdown. Dawson didn't do it, that might have. There you see on the replay, just falling right behind the block of Langer, the center, and gets in there for the touchdown, and Dawson will now come on to try the extra point, and Cameron now leads it 23 to nothing in the third quarter. Dawson on to try to make it 24. And a bad snap, Brownlow has to pick it up and improvise. Now he'll run and see if he can't throw it to somebody. Looking for the end zone, has a man, and he is knocked down and gets in the end zone for a two-point conversion. And, but flags are now down, so we'll have to sort this one out. As it stands, it's a converted two-point try after the touchdown, but it looks like that the penalty is against Cameron. In a situation like that, you imagine that the linemen have released and they have gone across the line, and we've probably got some type of an ineligible receiver downfield penalty to go against uh, the Cameron Aggies. That's right, David. It looked like Mike Lorenzen had released a little bit too early. He heard, he heard uh, Brown holler to free, uh, release, and he did so as well as the receivers. He got caught with that. I think they're going to be penalized and still have another opportunity to try for the field goal as they mishandled the original snap. So they'll line it back up again. That's really the first time that Cameron has had trouble handling the football. They, they haven't had to, uh, you, you haven't seen too much difficulty for them. Uh, and the weather hasn't really adversely affected the way they've been able to control the game, and so that's really the first time that it, it had a bad snap. And again, that's something just like on a punt. There are a lot of things that people take for granted, but when you put a slippery ball into the equation, it makes a big difference. Low snap, Brownlow gets it down, and Dawson's point after is good. There is again another timeout on the field. 7.06 to go in the third quarter. Cameron is winning in a big way over Carson Newman, 24 to nothing. Cameron has scored again, 24 to nothing, after a touchdown by Roosevelt Gamble, sneaking in from one yard out, and Cameron benefiting from outstanding field position again, driving the ball after picking it up on the Carson Newman side of the field after a short punt into an incredibly stiff win, very short drive, about 36 yards, and they go inside behind the running of Chuck Smith and Robert Whitman, Smith getting the ball just onto the doorstep, and then Roosevelt Campbell taking it in the rest of the way on the quarterback sneak to point after by Dawson making it 24 to nothing and the rain which was coming down hard initially comes down even harder if you can imagine it and the wind blows even more and Dawson kicks the ball away deep and completely through the end zone on the fly and again if you can see those flags you can tell that there's a tremendous wind and folks now are certain of the outcome and they are beginning to leave. We will now try to go down to the sideline and get a word uh, from Stan Cotton. Stan, what do you have for us? David, as you, all, as you know, Carson Newman uses the very offense. And that's kind of like the wishbone because it's not very suited to uh, coming back and scoring quickly. And uh, usually the Eagles don't deviate from their very offense. They're going to have to if they're going to catch up in the football game. Back to you. Thank you, Stan. Still running the beer, though that's a basic play off the spin from the quarterback, and they give it inside, and not much is there. Again, as Stan mentioned, it's the Cameron Aggies also run the beer. There's the drive that we had talked about earlier. Eight plays, 37 yards, and that's the big factor in that drive. They only had to go 37. It took four minutes, three seconds, and Roosevelt Campbell gets the score on the quarterback sneak to Steve Dawson. Point after brings it to 24 to nothing, Cameron. Uh, kicking the ball away, and Carson Newman now has it second down and six from their own 24-yard line, six and a half minutes to go in the third period. 
again, the same play, give it inside to Kenneth Tyson. They've tried that all afternoon, and I don't think they've had continued success with it. It's worked occasionally, but it's never worked consistently. David, one thing, we might go back to that touchdown drive. I think the key in that is only eight plays and 37 yards, but more importantly, the Cameron offense eight four minutes and three seconds off the clock. That's what they want to do now is grind the clock down, uh, slowly work it into the end zone, keep possession uh, going into that fourth period. Would you look at the rain? They pitch it back in a quick kick. And that's a good move. They'll kick it away and try to get some field position out of it. Charles Washington lets the ball go away. It is now down by Carson Newman. But facing a third down and six, they just wanted to get rid of the ball and get out of that field position uh, deficit that they were in. And now hopefully they can get their defense to go three and done and get the ball back. But time is running out, and the elements are definitely working against. There you saw the quick kick on the instant replay. Not a bad job. Really, if it would win like this, you need to keep it low and line drive and into a brand and hope that it'll roll, and he did that. Cameron has the ball on there into the field, 42-yard line, first down and 10. Cameron will keep the ball on the ground. From here on in, you can just about bank on it. Give it to Whitman, and he's got room. It's a sprint to the goal line. He's got one man in pursuit and is caught from behind. Robert Whitman with a big game from the 42 all the way down inside the 15-yard line to about the 12, a gain of 30 for Robert Whitman, and he has played an outstanding game. Look at it again. David Whitman, a, a run exactly like this is what won the ball game for Cameron over the number two rated Bears of Central Arkansas in the quarterfinals. Uh, he scored on that uh, particular run. Of course, he doesn't have the speed to go that uh, distance, of course, as he was brought down from behind. But an outstanding second effort gains another six yards, and that puts up another outstanding uh, opportunity for the Cameron uh, offense to get in the end zone as the defense of Carson Newman appears to be a little bit fatigued. And, it, of course, it's wet. The wind's been in their face for two quarters now, and I think things are beginning to change Dallas Coleman made the stop, but not before the ball is advanced inside the 10-yard line. It's first and goal from the six. Chuck Smith has very low running room. Stacked up there by the entire defensive front. Allen Brown among those leading the charge for Carson Newman. And now it begins to be a time of frustration for both uh, the Carson Newman defenders and the offensive players. The offense has not been able to move anything uh, throughout the ball game outside of that first drive in the very first quarter. The defense has been on the field an awfully long time, and they find themselves in tough field position every time they go out onto the field. It's second down and goal from the seven-yard line for Cameron. Campbell will give it to Whitman. And not much there, but again, the Aggies content just to keep from turning the football over. David, we might re uh, re uh, reiterate the fact that the Cameron University Aggies came into this ball game forgetting the revenge factor that, that so many teams have in their mind after losing a big game like they did last year. They stuck to the game plan, they went out, they executed, and they continue to execute well throughout this ball game. And I, I believe that's what's kept them in it. They've forgotten all other outside factors and keyed on this particular ball game. Third down and goal from the six-yard line. Cameron with the football and a 24 to nothing lead. Pitch it out. Chuck Smith, touchdown. Seven-yard run by Chuck Smith for the score. And Dawson comes on to try the extra point, and this game is turning into, or has turned into, a rout. This one, with 3.50 to go in the third quarter, is absolutely over. High snap, Brownlow gets it down, it's blocked. Nice play by Jake just to catch the ball, and he tried to get it down, but that messed the timing of the play completely up, and so Carson Newman was able to come in and get the block up, the extra point. That is really one of the few things that we've been able to see on the positive. Here's the touchdown run. David, we might mention the fact that I believe that Cameron uh, caught the Carson Newman defense off, uh, off guard a little bit as they went outside on the pitch sweep to Smith. 
They've been going inside, as we said, all the whole game long. They decided to go outside, maybe change it up a little bit. Not a, really a factor, considering the fact they had a two plays to work with and getting it in the end zone. They thought, well, if, if Smith loses his footing, he will still be in the ball game, or they will still have another opportunity to get in the end zone. And, but Smith kept his footing. The blocking was there, and he got into the end zone for the touchdown. And as you said, it's all academic from this point on. Uh, it's 30 to nothing with 3.50 to go in the third period, as you see. Cameron leads 30 to nothing. The Carson Newman Eagles have been just literally the dynasty of the 80s. We mentioned earlier about Coach Kent Sparks and the job that he had done since 1982. This team had only lost one game in the playoffs, and they had never lost in the finals. They were 2-0-1, having... Uh, won championships outright twice and shared them once. And I don't think anyone ever would have believed that we would have had this kind of a score of the game regardless of the conditions to for 30 points to be on the board already in the third quarter. And again, Dawson, it's just a given. Each time you kick off with that wind to your back, you know it's going to sail all the way through the end zone and you're going to have it on the 20-yard line. So now Carson Newman <laughs> looks up at the clock and it's a lot like being down about 12 to 1 in a baseball game in the fifth inning knowing that you've still got to go out there and complete it without much of a chance at all because even if the breaks do start to come back Carson's new, Carson Newman's way they're just battling time they don't have enough time to score as many points as they need to get back in the football game first down and 10 from the 20 yard line for the Eagles I formation for Carson Newman pitch it out to Turner and hit behind the line for a loss. And David, as you said, it is hard for a team to come out when knowing that its uh, back is against the wall now. Uh, trailing 30 to nothing, it's hard for the unit to come out and stay fired up and drive the length of the field as they need to do and put it in the end zone knowing that it's still going to be uh, a 30 to 6 uh, deficit uh, as you see the uh, scoring uh, drive. Four plays, 58 yards, just a minute 56. Of course, the big play in the drive was the, the long run uh, by Robert Whitman that put them close and then Chuck Smith carrying it in from six yards out the point after try uh, by Steve Dawson failed twice I might add they tried it once on a bad snap and tried to throw it into the end zone the two-point conversion failed because of a penalty and then uh, another bad snap did not allow them to complete it but it's still a 30 to nothing ball game second down at 13 and Lowry will throw and he is rushed and has Pat Johnson for a short game, John Tennyson rides him down as he gets across the 25-yard line up to around the 26. He's still going to be short of the first down. It'll bring up a third down play and four from that point. David, the Cameron defense saw something there. Uh, blitzing free safety, uh, Charles Washington, number five. Uh, he got in there and mixed it up with uh, Lowry, forcing him outside. But then Johnson released uh, shy of the line of scrimmage, setting up a, what it was a short screen, uh, getting a few yards for uh, Carson Newman. Just the second pass of the day for the Eagles and the first completion. Lowry, the sophomore quarterback, bows under on a third down and four play. Give it inside and not much yardage there. He needed four, didn't pick it up, so it'll bring up a fourth down play for Carson Newman. In there on the stop, Pat Hartline, the senior from Lawton, and he has played extremely well all season long and really throughout his career. He's been a stellar player, and this is his final season, and what a way for him to go out. He, Thomas O'Kelly, and Eli Davis along that front line. Back in punt formation, Jim Bales gets his kick away. It's a line drive kick, but it is short rolling, and it will be down by Carson Newman just across midfield at the 49-yard line of Cameron. 152 to play in the third quarter. Cameron leading it. 30 to nothing and we, we might mention that the score is a little misleading although Cameron has dominated the game defensively Carson Newman really has not had a chance to get much going offensively because of the weather conditions they've they've had field position work against them they just not had any chance to do much and the breaks have gone Cameron's way they'll bring it up now first down and 10 Roosevelt Gamble at the controls and gives it to Chuck Smith, and that's going to be the game plan as it has been all game long is now just to run the clock out because it's just a matter of getting it to the end of the fourth quarter. Now Cameron, I believe, has tried one pass, and uh, that was uh, incomplete on a little flare, so we've had a, had a game that we would believe 
would be ground oriented both teams a ground oriented package anyway and reinforced that because of the severe weather that we're enjoying here at 1987 NAIA Champion Bowl. It's a second down and seven play from the Carson Newman side of midfield. Give it to Robert Whitman. Gets across the 45 yard line just across it to about the 44. Pickup of about four yards. It'll bring up third down and three as we approach a minute to go in the third period. David, all 30 points by Cameron has been scored in the second and third periods. That is when they've had their backs to the wind, and that's definitely uh, frustrating for Carson Newman, knowing that they uh, have faced those wind conditions for the past two periods, and that's where the uh, 30 points have been amassed. Great point. Third down and three. Give it to Chuck. Second effort gets him the first down. Pushes it across the 40 to the 39-yard line, and that will be another Cameron Aggie first down. And for fans who have watched and listened to the Cameron Aggie football throughout this season, they've got to be pleased with the play of the Cameron Aggie offense. Speaking as an observer who had been watching Cameron throughout most of the season, that was a, a sore point because the Cameron offense had a a propensity for moving the ball between the 30s and then absolutely self-destructing inside the 30-yard line. And you would figure that would happen again today because of the excuse they would have with the poor field conditions. But it hasn't worked out that way. Option play for Gamble. And he gets it across the 35-yard line, pickup of about five. And that will wind things down in the third quarter. We are 15 minutes away from a final, there's your score after three periods. Cameron, 30. Carson Newman, nothing. Back with the final period. The officials, uh, and I don't blame them at all. They are wanting to get this game underway. Normally, they'll wait for us to get back from our commercials and get things going again, but it is raining out there. They're ready to go home. There you see the scores. We start the third, fourth quarter. 30 to nothing. Cameron has the lead. Pitch out on the first down play or rather the second down play to Chuck Smith sweep around the right side but a flag on the play and they'll mark it back against Cameron. Clipping is the call and it'll bring it all the way back to the Carson Newman 45 yard line. That'll bring up a second down play once more and they'll need to get it to the 29 so second down and about 16. 14.54 to go in the fourth quarter. 30 to nothing. Second down and 15 for Cameron from the 45 yard line. Chuck Smith again. A big gain inside the 32 yard line. Smith continues to hammer away at the Carson Newman defense. Stan Cotton standing by and he is thoroughly wet at this point. Stan, what's the story on the sideline? Well David and Stacy, if you can believe this, this is what Carson Newman's been waiting for. Finally the Eagles game. And just right there, the point that Stan was making on the sideline, they needed to get the ball quickly. Now they do have the offense has the ball with the win at their back. Finally, the very first time they had this situation, you'll remember back in the first quarter, they had the ball on the 30-yard line and moved it swiftly down the field into scoring position. Luis Rivez had to try a field goal after the drive stalled inside Cameron territory. He was not able to convert it, but now they've got the wind at their back. The question is, how can they use it? Because they haven't been throwing. Fumble on this snap, and Lowry has to recover it. That's happened three times today. Lowry has had problems with the snap one time. He had a misconnection with his pulling guard, who actually knocked the ball loose. Thomas O'Kelly recovered it, and the Aggies turned that into points. So the very first play that they have with decent field position, not outstanding, but they're not backed up at the 32-yard line, and it results in a fumbled snap, and it's a second down and 10 from the 33-yard line. Now to throw. Flare out to Johnson, and it is incomplete. Tipped, I believe, by Pat Hartline. Got a hand on it. They were trying to run the split-in screen to Pat Johnson. Let's take a look at the third quarter st statistics, and you can tell by that number there that obviously Cameron is winning it in a big way, 225 yards rushing, and that is the total yards because they dare not try to throw the ball. Cameron's defense doing the job shutting down the Carson Newman rushing attack only 102 yards. Few first downs, nine and six, because they've been relying on big plays, have Cameron not, not grinding it out as they go down the field. 
Third and ten for Carson Newman. And Edwin Lowry is stacked up. Chris Crosley comes in. Looked like they tried to look, do a little bit of a counter-reverse fake to free uh, Lowry for the boot, but he wasn't there. And Chris Crosley smelled it out and stopped things short. No gain at all. So the very first possession that Carson Newman has with that wind to their back results in absolutely no gain at all. It's fourth down and ten, but Jim Bales ought to be able to get a boomer of a punt away. And he does. It goes completely into the end zone and covered there for a touchback. Keith Atkinson back there receiving the punt for Cameron. Misjudged it a little bit and went through his hands and it went all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And so Cameron will find out uh, or have the ball first and a 10 from their 20-yard line with 12.55 to go. In the final period, they lead it by 30 points. There's a timeout on the field, 12.55 to go. Fourth quarter, your score is Cameron 30. Uh, Carson Newman, nothing. Will Cameron will set the ball and go with it first down and 10 from their own 20-yard line. We thought we were going to hit a break, but the officials are ready to get this thing going. First down and 10 for Cameron. They've got the backs in a split set behind and give it to Keith Ellis. End of the ball game for the first time. Ellis is a player who played a little bit uh, in just about every single game, and they, for a while, were considering starting Ellis in place of Chuck Smith. Exactly right, David. Until yesterday afternoon, Brian Neighbor, a head coach of the Aggies, said that they would go with Keith Ellis, but he changed his mind after the, the win, uh, rain continued to fall. He believed Ellis's key is the quickness, and uh, that would be limited today on the wet artificial surface. So they decided to go with uh, Chuck Smith, but Ellis is in there now, and we expect to see him run the ball quite a few times this afternoon. Three-yard pickup brings up a second down and seven play. They'll, on the option, give off the beer inside. Very little gain there for uh, Chuck Smith. Rather, that's Robert Whitman on the inside, and he was stacked up by Fred Wagner, the nose guard for Carson Newman. Also, Tom Failing in there for the Carson Newman Eagles. You can just see it, the rain pelting down on this surface, and it is, it, it's been this way all day long. It snowed here Monday, and rained starting Thursday. It hasn't let up at all, and the game has been played in a virtual downpour. From start to finish, and Cameron has gotten the better of it. Third down and six. Ellis breaking over the right side, picking up good yardage. He gets across the 25-yard line, but it's going to be short of the first down. They'll mark it at the 27. It'll bring up a fourth down and three play, and Cameron will be forced to punt the football away. And this could be a key punt, David. As we said, uh, that was the uh, downfall of the Carson Newman Eagles early, the kicking game. Uh, Cameron now faces that with... Uh, it looks as though they'll have Steve Dawson in to punt for the Aggies, and he may face that strong win as a factor as well. Eagles put 10 men on the line, heading up for the block. High snap, and it goes through Dawson's hands. This one will go into the end zone, and it is recovered by Dawson in the end zone for a safety. So Carson Newman gets on the board with a safety. Again, as we talked, the problems, well, there you go, good high snap, but it went right through his hands, and alertly Dawson for a moment looked around as if he wasn't going to try to recover the football, but he did, and Carson Newman picks up two on the safety. There is a timeout on the field. We'll take a break now. 10.54 to go in the final quarter. Your score, Cameron 30, Carson Newman 2. A low kick, and it will be picked up on the near sideline by Willie Lundy, just short of the 45. He crosses midfield and gets knocked down as he crosses the 50. Darren G in there on the special team stop for Cameron. And so Carson Newman has their best field position of the day. They'll start it inside Cameron territory. First down and 10. They trail it by 28 points. Carson Newman getting on the board for the very first time on a safety as the bad or the good snap actually just went through Steve Dawson's hand. Slippery ball there. And the Cameron defense and in no way can let down at this point. Uh, Carson Newman can get right back in the ball game, scoring a couple of quick touchdowns, David. As we said, the win being a factor, they have it at their back. Great field position, and uh, they could turn this into a whole other ball game. Of course, there's not a whole lot of time, just over 10 minutes to play in the final period. But as we said, all the other scores were scored by Cameron uh, with their win to their back. So anything can happen at this point in the ball game. Vernon Turner gets the call. He and Alvin Thomas are the setbacks right now for, Cam uh, for Carson Newman, Kenneth Tyson, uh, not in the ball game. 
Lowry still is the quarterback. Second down and eight from the 46. Option for Lowry, following his running back and gets good guardage to the 41-yard line. There on the stop is Chris Crosley for the Aggies, but not before Lowry has picked up yardage. Carson Newman's offense, you see they've averaged 382 total yards per game, and they are well underneath that now. Through three periods, they had only amassed 102 yards total offense and nothing through the air. So again, Cameron coming up with a stellar defensive performance against a team with a high-powered offense for the second week in a row. Lowry stands up now checking off at the line. Cameron showing blitz. Now they back out of it. They'll give it to Turner, and he gets just two yards as he gets it across the 40-yard line, and that will be short of the first down fourth down and around three from the 39 yard line if they mark it that far they looks like now they'll put it on the 40 so it's now an interesting situation for Carson Newman they've got to go for it they can't punt Lowry audible for the quick handoff to overrun the uh, Cameron defense uh, the defense pulled the blitz and the stun off uh, therefore the they got caught with only a two yard gain did the Carson Newman Eagles fourth and two they need to get to the 38 yard line Quick give to Turner, and he gets the first down. That's the play that they were hoping to pop on third down, and uh, he came very close. A good open field tackle there for Cameron, or that could have broken into the secondary for an awfully big gain, or as it works, it, it's a gain of only four, but they only needed two for the first down, and so the Eagles have a first down and 10 at the Cameron 36-yard line. 8.45 to go and ticking in the ball game. They trail it by 28 points. Lowry with his twin setbacks again behind him, Turner and Thomas. Roll out, looking to throw, has a man, and it is overthrown. He had two men in the same area, tight end. Number 88, Cliff Weber, was underneath, and then he also had a wideout who was farther along in the pattern, and neither player was able to get to the football. Exactly right, David. That was a smart move by Lowry, uh, throwing the ball high, if anything. Two defenders, uh, including Trevor Johnson for the Aggies, in there, uh, making or keeping him from uh, passing right through the uh, where he should have been sewing the uh, threading the needle. He couldn't do so, so he threw a little bit high for the the big tight end to Weber, and uh, of course they didn't come up with it. Second and ten. Delay and a loose ball. Lowry gets it back, but Thomas O'Kelly with a great play there. He did not uh, get blocked at all, and they were not able to. Uh, recover from that. No one was able to be back to block O'Kelly. There you see the Cameron defense. They allowed a 260 yards per game, only 98 per game rushing. They'll give up a little bit on the pass, allowing 2.4 yards per rush, and they're probably beneath that statistic today, having allowed just over 100 yards rushing, and here we are in the fourth quarter again. The Cameron defense has been the story of the Cameron team all year long, and they have been a major factor today. Looking to throw Lowry. Brian Callahan makes the hit after he had dumped the ball off to Alvin Thomas. And very little game there. So it'll bring up fourth down and long, fourth and 17 from the 42-yard line. Now they bring the punting unit onto the field. But again, uh, it, it's, it's a go-for-it situation if you want to because you know this punt is going to go completely through the back of the end zone. So a possible fake up the sleeve of Carson Newman Eagles here. Bale standing at the his own 45-yard line. They snap it to the up man, and he is stopped short of the first down. The snap goes uh, to the up man for Carson Newman. That was David Mack, and the Aggies were expecting it all the way, and it didn't work. Exactly right, David. What Carson Newman needs now is points on the board. They need points, and, and they need them in a bad way. Cameron knows this. They were ready for the fake punt, as probably everyone in the stands were, as we were hearing the fans call for the fake punt. You just have to think that they're going to pull something off or try to pull something off to keep possession of the ball and get in the end zone because they do definitely need 28 points to stay in this ball game as seven minutes and 30 seconds remain to be played. Officials trying to set the football now, getting things all dried off, and this is a series for Cameron that they can really work things off the clock and at the game, of course the game is, has been long gone over, but uh, they can continue to wind things down now. You give it to Chuck Smith and he gets a little bit of yardage off the left side there on the stop for Carson Newman. 
Bruce Chiseline is in there. There's a flag down on the play, so we'll have to check that out. And David, this is the time Cameron uh, bringing in a few uh, linemen, letting their starters get a rest as we, as we see several coming in. Uh, first of all, David Stout uh, comes in at left guard, and Jeff Hudson uh, replay, uh, coming in at uh, right guard, rather. And that's to give the starters a rest, uh, Cox and Lorenzen, to give them a, a little bit of a rest in case the game may get close. And if not, well, they can stay out and give these the uh, underclassmen an, a good opportunity to get some playoff experience for future years as they have at least two more to be played with Cameron. The flag was an unintentional face mask, five-yard penalty against Carson Newman. So it's second down and three from the 48-yard line. Give it inside to Chuck. And he bowls into Carson Newman territory and it appears that he has another Cameron first down. David, uh, Chuck Smith is listed at 5'8", 265 pounds. Being around Chuck and, and standing side by side with him, I have to believe that he's a little bit heavier than 265. Coach Neighbor says he's an unusual case in that he comes in the preseason a little bit light and then gains weight throughout the year. It's usually the reverse but uh, Smith is probably a little heavier than 265, more in the 275 range. He outweighs every lineman that he has. The heaviest offensive lineman is 255 pounds. There goes Chuck again, and he's tripped up after he gets a big gain into the secondary. But Chuck Smith with another good run. Chad Sparks tripping up Chuck Smith as he got into the secondary, but another big run, and it looks like it's close enough for a measurement. He might have gotten another first down. They mark him just short. He needs to get to the 36-yard uh, line. The ball is marked just outside of the 37. So second down and one, 6-12 to go in the football game. Cameron with the ball and a 28-point lead. Gamble on the option. Pitch out. And Chuck Smith gets a little bit of yardage around the right side. Nice job reading the option there. You see that he took his time to read the end on the uh, on the bait to the fullback and then cut it upfield and then pitch the ball out. There you see Cameron offensively averaging 238 yards rushing per game. They've gotten that today. They've averaged 27 points per game, and they've gotten that as well. So the Cameron offense have lived up to their past season statistics. The Cameron defense has added lived up to their past season statistics. That got them a 10-2 record during the season, and it is about to bring them their first ever NAIA National Football Championship. Give it to Robert Whitman, and he continues to pound away at the Carson Newman defense, and those guys have to be getting awfully tired and about ready for that clock to run right out. That's exactly right, David. They're forgetting uh, the offense coming on and getting some points. They want to get out of this ballgame and get in some dry conditions. They've been beaten and battered. The offense of Cameron surprisingly continuing uh, to drive the ball extremely well with uh, Smith and Whitman, and uh, Gamble stays in as we thought we would see. LaVon Davis come in. He has not been needed as the Gamble has continued to uh, just do an outstanding job for the Cameron offense. Second five play, try to give it inside on the first option of the beer, but not much there at all. Pick up of only a couple. Fred Wagner getting up off the stack. And uh, also Bruce Chisley coming in to make the stop for the Carson Newman Eagles. There you see the clock winding down. That's time remaining in the football game. Third down and five for Cameron from the Eagle 27. Third and five play. Double wide outs to the near side. Pro set backfield. Pitch it out to Keith Ellis. Breaks a tackle and good second effort. Gets him down near the 20 yard line and that could be yet another Cameron first down. Nice play by Keith Ellis. A running back out of Victoria, Texas and he does pick up the first down good run and he is going to be a good running back for his careers over with at Cameron. He has really uh, got the speed necessary to get him around the corner and that's the one breakaway back that they really don't have. He's just a sophomore, 5'8", 170 pounds. He's in the mold of the backs that uh, the University of Oklahoma uses in the wishbone. Not a lot of strength but they can fly and that's the kind of back that Keith Ellis is and he'll be a breakaway threat in the future for Cameron. Wow, snuffed up in the backfield. Nice play there. The big man coming through was 
uh, Trey Eller making a stop. Also, Leroy Mincy was in there on the stop. But Trey Eller with a big hit to stop things. 6'7", 285 pounds. Eller, the biggest guy on the field. And uh, he makes a good play. Watch it on the replay. That was Mincy making the first hit. Nice play by the linebacker. And Mincy was not fooled for a second. The uh, Carson Newman defense still doing an outstanding job as, as their, back, their backs are once again against the wall. But they continue to rise to the occasion when they need it. Hopefully they can just hold uh, Cameron out this last uh, drive. Second and 12 from the 23. Pitch it to Ellis. And not much running room there. Gets it uh, almost to the 20-yard line. But it'll bring up a third down and long situation as we move under three and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Cameron leads it 30-2. to two. They scored all their points, headed with the wind at their back. They got on front in the second quarter by blocking a punt and then running it in for a touchdown. A, uh, a negative yardage punt, which got into a fierce wind, gave Cameron the ball on the Carson Newman 21-yard line. They moved it in to score to go up 14 to nothing. A Dawson field goal made it 17, and they have just poured it on from there. It's third down and long. Cameron gives it off, fakes off rather. That's Roosevelt Gamble trying to improvise, and he is cut down in the backfield for a loss. Kim Phillips in there helping make the stop for the Eagles. The official attendance at today's game, 7,685, and that is a remarkable figure considering today's weather conditions. It has been cold and rainy all day long, and yet still almost 8,000 people found a way to get out of their houses and into the stands for this game, and, and not many... There have been a lot that have left, but a lot of folks have stuck around because, I mean, if you're, you can't get much more wet than soaked. They'll give it inside on a fourth down and 12 play. Keith Atkinson on the carry. He has stopped well short of the first down, so Cameron gives the ball over on downs. Carson Newman has the ball. First down and 10. Ken Phillips made the stop. Uh, so there you see the time with 2.09 to go in the final period of play. It's 30 to 2. Cameron has the lead. Stan Cotton is standing by on the sideline right now. Stan has this report for us. Stan? <laughs> David and Stacy, have you ever had one of those days? I think we all have. And this day was just that for the Carson Newman Eagles. You have to give credit, though, to the Cameron Aggies of Coach Brian Neighbor. They've had to play in this mess, too. Luckily for them, though, they have had the win most of the ballgame. They've been able to take advantage of their situation. So one of those days for the Eagles may be next year. Congratulations to the Aggies. Back to you. All right, Stan, this is an awkward situation for the Carson Newman Eagles. As we alluded to earlier, they have never been in this position. Every time they have gotten into a championship final, they haven't lost it. They, they won two and tied one, and this is a new experience for Carson Newman, but they have a lot of good skill players coming back. Edwin Lowry is one. He's just a sophomore, and he could bring this team back next year. Whistles blow, flags fly as the snap it looked like somebody might have beaten the snap a little bit there, so the officials will sort things out. And hopefully Stan has found a place to duck underneath and get dry. Because it has been awfully rugged getting out there on the sideline, walking up and down all game long. He's done a fine job for us, and hopefully he'll be able to help us out whenever the uh, end of the game rolls around and maybe uh, have a chance to talk to a player or two at the end of the football game. We are only two minutes and nine seconds away from that. The penalty goes against... Uh, Carson Newman, it is a big one. It moves them all the way back to the 12 yard line. So it's a second, uh, first down and 20 from the 13. Lowry on the option. Pitch out. And ridden down. That's Vernon Turner. Tommy Walker and Dallas Hodgson in there on the stop for Cameron after very little game. David, I didn't see who was on the defense on Lowry. Uh, he was really hammered as he just as he got the pitch away. Cameron defense continues uh, to do extremely well, even as they have a few uh, or a majority of substitutes in there, getting a lot of playing time. But right now, all Carson Newman wants to do is eat time off the clock, get out of this one, and get out of it alive. First down, uh, second down and 20. Lowry on the option. He'll pitch it out. 
and knocked down after a short gain. That's Pete Cromarty in at running back. Tommy Walker again making the stop for the Aggies after a very short gain and the clock winds toward 140 and counting in the football game. Third down and long and Carson Newman continues to watch the hopes of defending that national championship tick away. Tommy Walker in on the last two tackles. David, he's a junior. Coaches think he'll have an uh, outstanding role for them next year as he's a great tackler and reads uh, offensively extremely well. Big game here and watch Cromarty go. Outstanding run by Pete Cromarty as he breaks it all the way from the 17-yard uh, line out to the 46 in Cameron territory. That's the biggest single gain, and we'll see it again on the replay. Nice open field running there by Cromarty, and a tackle made by Kenny McGee in the defensive backfield for Cameron. So it's first down and 10 for the Eagles from the 46-yard line. Lowry will throw it back across the field for his tight end Weber. Caught off the turf, and he gets forward across the 40-yard line to about the 33. Instead, he went to Mark Johnson, who made the catch, and that is only the second completion of the day for the, Cam for the Carson Newman Eagles. 45 seconds and counting to go in the ballgame. Second down and four. Looking to throw, Lowry dumps it off. It's complete and dropped, loose ball, and it is called an incomplete pass. David, a situation that neither team wanted to get into. Of course, it's not a situation, of course, to win the ball game, but it's a situation maybe Carson Newman gets six more points out of it. They're going to the passing game. Uh, very few people believe that uh, the passing game would be effective today with these wet conditions, windy conditions. Carson Newman agrees with that, but they're going to try to get it into the end, uh, end zone one last time. As you see, 29 seconds. They have yet to get a touchdown. The only points coming on is safety on a missed snap. Uh, Steve Dawson missed the punt snap. They're going to try to get it in one last time. Give inside to Alvin Thomas, and he gets near the 30-yard line, and now... The clock stops as he has gotten the left yardage for uh, the first down. They'll move the chains and set him again. Carson Newman will go without a huddle and try to get into the end zone before the end of the ball game. Clock starts up again. You see it counting down. Cameron is going to win it. They are going to win the NAIA National Championship in their last year of existence. Lowry looking long, and he has a man, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Alan Cox along the sideline, but it was just a little bit too tall, and it works for an incompletion. It'll bring up second down and 10. The fans are on their feet, neighbor waivers waving in the wind, and eight seconds away for Cameron to be crowned the NAIA's national champion. And I don't know that anyone at the first of the year would have imagined that this team could have gotten this far. It's a credit to Brian Neighbor and his staff. It's a credit to the players that they would be able to rise above the adversity that they had all season long and to get to this point. Lowry to throw on the last play of the game. He has all kind of time looking across the middle and it is intercepted to end the game. Kerry Johnson got the interception to end it and now the celebration can begin.